is approximately one, uh, 15 hours into the day. And we begin our next discussion. Where we left off on Hitler and the current situation with the Baxters. And the uh, term Baxters is an anti Baxter. Leadership society 
are very few. They are not. They are not society. They do not represent society in any matter. Matter of fact, the way they situate themselves, these leaders, they are not even a part of society, mainstream society, or lower society. They sit above and make these rules, you know, assuming that they're no, they know what's best. And ironically enough, this occurs occurs in the in yes minister and yes prime minister, where the liberal left leader and the uh, uh, and Nigel Horth and the character he plays get together and they're battling out because he's the uh, administrator of administrators, the ministry of the ministry of administrative affairs. And he's the head. He's the head uh, uh, administrator. So he administers the whole government. And he's got this opposition person. says yes and as they realize they're on the same page they begin to formulate a, ma a plan to work together this is sort of what you're seeing up in Canada here right oh you have all these parties and everybody's all so so different right well I'm not gonna vote liberal anymore because you know I don't like Justin Trudeau I think I'll vote NDP yet if you look at the voting record and this is sort of an indicator of who the vaxes are and why they're absolutely clueless as long, uh, 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 along with the anti-vaxxers, they, they're, they're basically two sides of the same coin. Uh, you, know, you, you know, when you have a coin, you have a heads and a tails. Well, they're actually, the, these are, this is the heads and tails of the same side of the coin. This is why the Hegelian dialectic, in many ways, is a form of mythology. Academics, and this is the nature of humanism, have a tendency to create their own realities. In other words, they don't see reality. They, don't, they, they, they create their own world. In other words, this is what we talk about uh, European mythology. European mythology is a mythology created by humanistic uh, Europe. About modern Europe, it's its, own, its own sense of what's real, and academics are are, are great at this, and they'll come up amazing arguments, whole theories, books on why they are right and everybody else is wrong. And they maintain the world they create. It's not a real an imaginary world. This is what happens at Davos. You get all these academics together, all these nerds, and they're all playing the sort of, we we'll call it a war game. create scenarios and in these scenarios you write up all the different conditions and the things like that and so on and so forth and all these things that could happen how you're gonna behave it's, the, it's basically an advanced form of dungeons and dragons and that's all it is dungeons and dragons
So imagine a group of nerds sitting around playing Dungeons and Dragons, and then, uh, then after getting tired of that and sort of succeeding at it to a certain degree, they say, I'm going to go ahead and do this for real. Well, that's what Davos says. But the thing is that this is, this is also what Harvard is, this is what uh, uh, Cambridge University is, this is what Oxford is, is a group of people who create a world for themselves based on scenarios. And this is what social engineering is. It, it, it's a live action role play. It's a LARP. So, to go out and say that Q is a LARP, understanding this, this is par for the course. But of course, most people didn't understand this. Well, they created, once again, they created their own view of <laughs> what reality is. And they came up with a lot of different views, all these different pundits going out there and explaining what Q was not understanding what a LARP was. Yeah, yeah, you, you have the one who, uh, I, well, I was watching Lyle at the time, at the time of Q, and Lyle was, was kind of upset that people called this a LARP. Q was, wasn't a LARP. Yeah, you don't understand. Very good. Because apparently Lionel, being a lawyer, and this is many of the, the, the legal types, was uh, a type of person who never played Dungeons and Dragons. He never got into live action. If he had, he'd know that this is how Davos works. This the scenario. This, this is what argument, this is what think tanks are. The Institute for the Policy on War. That's uh, the uh, Keegan family. So Hitler isn't a far-fetched thing, it's just what happens is that people don't understand the things that are going on in the world. Alright, have a good night. Sunday's uh, uh, family pops by and a very so and so far, my, uh, my neighbor. I grew up with them. <laughs> Some people move far from home in terms of going off and doing their own thing, others uh, stay quite close by. Uh, anyways, we'll get back on our discussion, conversation. Hitler and the current uh, situation that's going on. And the thing is, that what a lot of people don't understand is that, is that Hitler is the end point. Yeah, but it's an identifiable it's an identifiable end point, end point where the end point was not for, was not actually a desired end point. It was wasn't the way things are supposed to go. But this is how humanism sort of works up. And then this is what we do to talk about New World Order. Well, there have been more than one New World Order. The humanism has been trying to establish a New World Order for a long time since the conception. But it was never able to do so. It got part of the way, but never really sort of uh, what it was ever intended to be. So, when you, say, oh, you, when you hear someone talk about Hitler, in comparison to A or Crystal, he also wasn't the Crystal Knot. Crystal Knot uh, was one minor event in the whole evolution of, let's say, the Nazis. It was, it, it was very minor in, in terms of what it was to the entire uh, situation. Not that it wasn't uh, a bad thing. It is in terms of the way the, that you look at the entire perspective of the events that went on. And then just to talk about the mythology of humanism, that it, it creates its own sense of reality, which is not real. It's not real. But they can they convince it's real, they convince it's the, 
the way things have to be or the way things should be and you're not going to convince them otherwise. I mean, there is no fundamental conversation as to how you're going to do things. back to me. <laughs> the road is a little warped there, so I need to pay attention to the road. Uh, anyways, people use things in a manner as terms of a catchphrase. No certain understandings. And Kristallnacht is, uh, and, and amongst other things, but the term conspiracy theorist is a way of dismissing things. And in terms of the Kristallnacht, as I said, it wasn't. that significant. And the thing is, is like Hitler, it was the end point of something else. And this is the way Gnostics, the Gnostics work. And they, they, and this is what pops up in the Hegelian dialectic. The Hegelian dialectic doesn't matter where the conflict is as long as the conflict. So what happened is the Christian was something that was kind of eternal for the Nazi party. And I guess because there were a number of Jews who believed that there were Nazis. Hey. And the thing is, is that to underscore this, you had this, uh, uh, one of the uh, famous ones is uh, Jack Warner. There was a Jack Warner of the Warner Brothers. And he used to walk around in an SS uniform all day long. He sort of became enamored with it. And there was a kind, at, at that time, particularly in the United States, there was a romantic, 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 Romantization uh, of uh, of the Nazis during that period. The Nazis were very popular uh, in the 1930s and the 1940s. Uh, they weren't. Uh, this, is, this, and this is what what took things so long. If you look at the United States, oh yeah, the United States was uh, definitely against Nazis. They were well, not really. Look at when they got involved in the war. How long it took them to get involved? And that's because they were sort of undecided as to what they wanted to do. And that's because the Nazis had a huge following in the United States. There was sort of a camaraderie, if you will. Talk about uh, the, uh, the, uh, the neo-Nazis uh, or the white nationalists or white supremacists. Talk about that past. Well, there it is. I mean, we got into Vietnam. Well, we don't really know why we got into Vietnam. Sure we did. As Ho Chi Minh was our ally in the fight against the Nazis, and of course the French, who were part of the Nazis, uh, this is where you have the Vichy French, are now Vichy is, is, is a nice, it's a nice uh, fashionable uh, uh, icon. <laughs> but at the time, Vichy was the uh, the the the, the, uh, the Nazi French, and the Ho Chi Minh. Uh, helped out the Americans, uh, did a lot of the groundwork, and was armed and trained by the United States to fight the uh, the neo Nazis in uh, Indochina, and that was uh, that was uh, you know Thailand, that was Vietnam, that was Laos, Cambodia. state 
of uh, French. They were with the French. So we fought the war in Vietnam with the French. The French were We were European colonialism. So basically, the Vietnam War was a colonial war. Of course, history books aren't going to come out and tell you that. They're going to come up with some excuse about the they didn't like our uh, freedom. We need to demonstrate what our freedom is. This is, this is what you have in, had in Afghanistan. You still have it there. You know, the, the big troops have left. The main military force has left. But the, uh, the special forces are still there. The underground troops are still there. That war is still going on. The Afghan war has not gone, has not ended. And so what's happening is these are once again the Chunk of these people, but the parents, uh, the, the, the sort of well, the contrarians, were all shut down. The only one who, who, who survived is Lionel. He's the only survivor. He is the last of his breed. Contrarian. The person who does not accept party line or does not have non enemies is identify himself not particularly with the probably standard uh, view that others have of a particular type of, uh, well, political pundit. 